Ah, it's a God be the glory. This is Saturday, January 11th. The Lord is so faithful to his people. I'm so glad that he brought me back home from dropping off my son uh, to college and just excited for him. No tears shed, just sheer joy knowing that God is going to do a great work. And I see the fruit and I'm trusting everything in the Lord's hands. And uh, yeah, continue to pray for all of our young people because uh, they have so much. But we have more. Greater is he that is in us than that which is in the world. Amen. Psalms 45, we are in because we are in 44 this morning. And because today is January 11th, Proverbs 11. So Psalms 45 starts with saying, my heart is indicting. That means that your heart is, or you are writing a love letter. Now here it said a song of loves. And it's describing a male and then a female, right? As far as, oh, you are so beautiful and you are so handsome and you're fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, God have blessed thee forever. But in verse one, it says, I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. You might not have that person in mind as far as here on earth, but we can always write a love letter to our father and creator. What did I say? I keep a journal and absolutely every night I just thank the Lord for 50 things that he has done for me throughout the day. Yeah. And of course, I am talking about how he allowed me to get home, you know, in the inclement weather, snow, ice, I don't know what it was, rain, mushy, whatever, couldn't see the the lines and the expressway. It was just like, oh, Lord, just, no, I was, I was singing all the way home and praying. Well, of course I wouldn't include that in my love letter to the Lord, but let's just pause. It might not be 50 things. I've heard, you know, celebrities keeping a gratitude journal and they would write five things, but it does something to just thank the Lord at the end of the day and say, you are so faithful and just keep a record. And then the fun part again is to go back the week before a month, a year, what have you, and look at the track record and huh, would you ever doubt your savior? Never. And also in Proverbs 11, we are talking about how those who diligently seek good procureth or receiveth favor. And we want to do that. We want to continually just seek God's face. I was talking to my uh, son last night and we were praying for his future, Lord willing, his future family, his future wife. And I don't think that's far-fetched. I said, Lord, keep her, you know, keep her focused and pure. And as well as the same for my son, so that when they come together, they can have a blessed union family. And if it's your will for them to have children, well, he was praying that. Amen. And he said, if I don't have children, still, that you would be honored with the family. Well, it says in verse 28, the righteous shall flourish as a branch, flourish in every way possible. We want to be able to be blessed, yeah, spiritually, physically, socially, financially, mentally, in every way, educational wise, so that you can horizontally impact your generation. Well, he that winneth souls is wise. She is wise also who tries to spread God's light. And that is in, I believe that's in, that's in that chapter. So the Lord wants that generation to make impact 
as well as a present one, so that the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, right? And then it will just be replenished over and over throughout the ages. Amen. And that was verse 30. He who winneth souls is wise. And that verse from this morning where I said that my mom quoted, just because someone is unbelieving or someone is doubting, does that make God's power ineffective? God forbid that every man be a liar, but God is true. So let's point to our Lord and Savior and know that we will be the ones who are the ones who will be blessed and the recipient of his love and grace. Enjoy his many blessings and write it down. Be that writer. Good night.